Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at how to copy objects with the spread syntax with React. Let's get started. So in our previous video, we were moving around a dot on the screen and we were using a position object in which we could create ways to create that, make that cursor and uh, an, an object follow the cursor position. Now, one thing is that you will sometimes want to start including existing data as part of a new object when you create it. So that what was going on there was in our previous was we were having and generating new data instantaneously and it was following that, making that dot follow the cursor. Now what would happen then if we want to maybe have a form, okay, where people were filling in their names, maybe their email address, and then we want to keep that information, okay? So we want to have input fields and we want them to do something with um, with a, a, a handler, okay? So let's go on and do that. Let's let's go on and create up a nice little React app with this. So import new state from React. Oops. And we're going to export default some function here. Oh some function and we're going to call this a uh, form. Okay, well, not from, form, okay. And it's going to, hmm, what are we going to have it do here? Let's have it take in a person, set a person, we're going to use state, and inside a state here, this person or individual is going to have a first name. And we'll call this again, Bob, a last name. Last name, Ross, a uh, company name. Uh, Let's just say Bob Ross Inc. And we'll have an email address. And this is, uh, let's say, Bob Ross at Bob Ross Inc.com. Okay, again, it doesn't have to be exactly amazing or anything. Now let's have it go on and we need to handle, let's say, what happens if we change the name, okay? So we want a function and we're going to, again, we need to handle the first name change. So handle first name change. And this is going to be person dot first name is equal to our event dot target dot value. Okay, and again, we're going to do this a couple more times. And again, E needs to be in here to handle that. And we'll, basically, we're going to do this uh, two more times, three more times here for each of these sections. Okay, and I'm just going to skip forward right to that. All right, so now we see here that we have Again, a little bit of time and for um, in, in the future here, we have first name, our last name version, our company name, and our email change. So after this, we want to actually have it return something out. Okay, and so we'll have it go on and put up. We can put in our tag here. We want a label. And this label is going to be first name. And then let's go on and have an input. An input. Okay, and this input is going to have in here a value is going to initially be the uh, person dot first name. 
And then we will also have in there on change is equal to our, our handle. And again, here it's the first name change function. And again, we are going to do the exact same thing for each of these handles, okay? And again, I'm just going to, for brevity's sake, for this video, I'm going to just skip forward and you guys can uh, just copy it down later. And as you can see here, we put in a label and an input for each of these. So for first name, last name, company name, email. And then the last thing that we want to do in here is to put in a paragraph. And we're going to put in our information. So it'll be something like person dot first name. And then we want to put in a space. And then we want um, maybe to put in, let's copy this and let's say we want this to be their last name. Oops. Last name. And maybe instead of a space, we may want a colon. And then, oh, maybe a colon with a space. How about that? Okay. And then the, uh, no, we'll have a space here. Just a space. And then we'll put person dot company name. And maybe this, we want this to be, let's think about maybe making this out into like a resume header. So let me think about it for a second. All right, so I guess it doesn't necessarily matter how how we actually do it too bad. Uh, again, it's just, just for an example, but let's put this in, let's maybe make a comma with a space for the company name. And then after the company name, here we'll put in a col colon with a space, and we'll put in the person dot email. Okay, and so this this is going to actually take you would have this information, okay, in the form, and it would automatically put it out as your uh, and some nice formatted type text that you like it. And so let's let's take a look here and see. Well, I still have my old one here, so I need to actually run this server. So let's do pm start. Let it run for a second. Well, I probably put it to uh, one. All right, so it's running. Let's go over and here we see here that it is now name, uh, first name, last name, company name, email. And again, you could make this look better however you want. Again, this is just more for practical application here. But again, as we see here, if I change this to anything, it's not actually even letting me change it, okay? Right now, again, I could try and change it, but I cannot. Okay, and one of the reasons is we never, again, just as before, we never have set up our set person. Okay, so we need to go on and add in that set person. So how do we go about doing that? Just like we did in the first one. Well, if we go back over and we go to this, these each of these, this person dot first name is equal to e.target, all of those issues, then we need to actually go through and change those, okay? So what exactly are we doing and how do we do it? Well, we can, uh, one reliable way would be to change it so that each time we go in to set a person, we could do something like this. We could do set person, well, let, let's just, let me just kind of show you what we can do. We can use this thing called the op object spread. Okay, so all of this information here is saved inside of this person, okay? 
And as we've seen in previous ones, if we do something like this, I can go here and do triple dot person, it's going to spread over all the fields. Okay, so this is actually uh, copying the old fields. Okay, then we can do something like first name. Oops, and actually inside here, sorry. This needs to be set person. And then we put it in there. Oh, and it, that is not what I wanted to copy. All right, so set person, we have an object. We do triple dot person. And then we're going to say something like first name uh, is e dot target dot value. All right, and what's happening here? Well, this one here is copying the old fields. And this here is uh, override this piece, okay? So now we could do all of this for all of the, all of the same. And you don't necessarily have to declare each of the separate state values each time, okay? So you can do first name, last name, email, et cetera. And we'll, again, we'll, we'll go through and we'll change each of these in turn. And then you can see kind of how this works. And actually, maybe just since I did one right now, we can go over and we can say, notice here, this is now Bo Ross. And we'll say, Maybe you want to change this to something like, oh, I don't know why it's not wanting me to type in there. So reason that it is not changing is if we look around here, again here, this first aim, I need to make sure and have a first name, okay? So let's go back over here and we can, again, change it from Bob to Fob. Okay, lob, doesn't matter. But notice here, we cannot change these yet because we have not updated them yet. Okay, so now we can go through and change each of these to be exactly what we wanted them to be using the set person uh, function and move on through. So let me update those and I'll be right back with you guys. So we've changed each of these. And again, I just kind of copied and pasted them and changed up the name. And we have this set person. We have uh, grab the old values, okay? And we have, uh, now we're able to go on and change each of these. And so if I, if I just refresh this, again, notice it says Bob Ross and it has Bob Ross Inc. But what if we did, again, I'll just do my name, Markham, Reed, and we have our company name. Again, I work at USF. And then um, my email, at gmail.com okay so notice that automatically fills that in so this is a great way think about this is that if you had a form uh, for people and you wanted to maybe maybe it was like a resume creating app okay where you had people fill out a form hit a submit button and then it would automatically uh, format it exactly how the way they wanted it to be or maybe later on they could import it in from a data set or anything else so we didn't actually have to declare any separate state variables for each field. So for large forms, keeping all the data grouped up in an object is going to be very convenient. So again, all we had to do was keep all of the information kind of right here in this one object. Now, that's fantastic for us because again, um, as long as you keep it updated and you keep it updated and you update it correctly, there's not going to be any problems with it. So again, something I wanted to note here is that we, we utilized this dot, dot, dot to spread out the data from our object, okay? And it is shallow. It only copies one level deep. So this makes it fast, but it also means that if you want to have nested properties, you're going to have to use it more than once, okay? And in, in the next video, we'll actually talk about how to update nested objects. Um, so if you guys like this and you want more of this content, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.